I mentioned in my New Year video that I want to make more content around data storage for a creative professional. And I feel that this is the perfect time to have that conversation. I'm about to go in and upgrade all the drive in my NAS network attached storage array to a larger capacity. This way I have a larger storage pool. And it got me thinking, it's probably a good time for me to have a conversation about why I prefer and use Synology for the past eight years, why I own many of their system, and it is also the system that I recommend to my friends, family, and also my clients that consult with me as well. I'm also going to share with you their Synology hybrid RAID system, which I think is unique to the entire NAT storage array industry in general, and why I really love that system because it gives us a lot of flexibility. And lastly, what we are going to do is test crash a network attached storage system that has a redundancy built in. So we're going to see how far we can push it. And if we push it beyond the limit of its tolerances, what would happen with our data? This would be a great test that we're going to find out what is going to really happen if we have data storage on the NAS. Let's find out together. I'm Art and Art is right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. I have been using Synology system for more than eight years now. I've owned so many types of their arrays from a two drive to a multi drive one like this one to also a server blade that contained 12 bays. So pretty crazy how much Synology I own. I also recommend Synology to furnish all my friends and family, including many photographers that consult with me about their storage system in general. When you get a NAS like this, it can be really great for just a one user like myself. You can really plug this in, get it running on your network using it. But if you have multiple people accessing the same group of data at any given time, having a NAS like this is really useful as well because you can then pull the data in the office so you don't even have, need a server running. You can just run a NAS and you're perfectly set there. Synology offers a lot of flexibility. They have multiple drive bays starting at you know one drive, two drive. They have four, five, six, eight, and then 12 bay system. And if you run out of those drive in the system that you have, you can always buy an expansion unit and add even more drive into a Synology system. So they make expanding and adding storage to the whole thing super easy. Their software, the operating system that runs on here is called DSM, this station manager. And this station manager is all pretty much a web graphical user interface. It's super easy to use. As a creative pro like myself, I don't really like to learn command lines. What I like to do is be able to go in and click and adjust, make changes to the storage and just be done with it and not having to worry too much about it. Even though DSM is a easy to use graphical interface, it is not simple by any means. It is a fairly sophisticated program that you can go in and do a lot of things with it if you want to. And the other thing that I really love about this system is that DSM does not try to hide or don't tell you what's really going on. When you go in and perform a task, it will tell you exactly what it is doing. This makes it very easy for me to go in and see if a data is scrubbing or not. Unlike some of the other NAS array that are out there or even just a hybrid NAS or a unique NAS that they're out there in a the market that will just do, for example, data scrubbing, but it doesn't really tell the user what's happening, which makes it a really annoying experience. So I've played around with multiple different companies and Synology is the one that pretty much just stick with me for those reasons alone. But the other thing that I really love Synology for is their Synology Hybrid Ray System or SHR. Rather than buying and using a normal RAID system like many of the other ones or other companies that are making, what you have to do with a traditional RAID system is let's say you have a six base system like this. When you want to set this up in a RAID, what you have to do is get six identical drive of the same size, same manufacturer preferred obviously, and then set them into a RAID and at that time you're pretty much locked in. You can have data redundancy but you can't really expand a RAID because if you want to do that, you have to pretty much back up your data, break the entire RAID array down, and then put in a whole set of new drive. SHR offers so much flexibility, and this is something that I really love because in the early days when I'm really starting out, I was just pulling multiple different size hard drive together to build a Synology array. And that's the great thing about SHR is that it doesn't always have to be the same size. In fact, on an array with six drive like this, I don't even have to populate all of them at once, I can just populate maybe the first four and I can always fill up the other two later. And when I fill up the other two later, I can just do one at a time 
and the size of a drive can be larger than the one that I already currently have in there. This way I have an even larger storage pool available. Now, Synology Hybrid RAID is not considered to be a high performance RAID type by any means. So for instance, if you run virtual machine on your NAS and you need high input output operation or IOPS, what you want to do then is configure your NAS with a traditional RAID system and that would be a better fit for you. However, for a creative professional, what we really need is a large storage pool. And SHR definitely delivers on that flexibility that we really need. On the newer Synology system, it also comes with a PCIe expansion slot. That PCIe expansion slot, what you can do is populate that with a 10 gigabit Ethernet card. For example, on this one, I have populated it with such card. On my Mac Pro that I'm running, it also has dual 10 gigabit Ethernet. When I hook these two systems together, I'm able to write the files to my Synology between 5 to 600 megabytes per second, and I'm able to get a read speed of close to and sometimes above 1000 megabytes per second. If we think about this, this is faster than a Samsung T5 SSD. Obviously, you wouldn't be using a Samsung T5 SSD in a RAID system like this, but this shows you that with a 10 gigabit Ethernet card, you can really do a lot with a NAS system. So the advantage you get here is a large storage pool with redundancy built in. The bad part about it is that you need to have it power, you need the 10 gigabit Ethernet card and 10 gigabit equipment, but it is a trade-off that you have to make. The great thing about the Samsung SSD is that you can take them on the road with you. And I know there are faster SSD out there now, for example, like the T7 from Samsung. The problem with the T7 is that once you fill in the DRAM on the SSD itself, the speed really drops, so you're not really getting consistent 1000 megabytes per second. All right, enough about talking speed. Essentially, what this can do with a 10 gigabit internet is that it makes the experience of using this NAS extremely seamless, and I really enjoy it. So I've already gone over why I like Synology, why I use Synology Hybrid RAID. One of the things that I want to clarify further is Synology Hybrid RAID. There are two modes you can set this to. There is SHR1 and SHR2. SHR1 will allow for one drive tolerance. That means there's one drive that could fail and you would still be able to access the data. You would still be able to pull the data out of there. You can rebuild the drive without any problems. The issue with SHR1 is that while you're building up that one drive failure, if another drive fails, your array would crash. And that's the slight problem that you have there. So if you really want total security, SHR2 is definitely the best system that you may want to consider. Because what happens is if one drive fails, you can restore that drive. If another drive fails while that first drive is restoring, your array is still safe. So there is a couple implications of that too, and we're gonna do that in the crash demo that is about to happen really soon. A few more things to go over about the NAS system is that even though these have redundancy built in, depending on your configuration, it is not a backup system by any means. You still need to backup your data and you should definitely be safe about that because if enough drive fails, your volume will crash. Once that happens, you can no longer pull your data back. And at that point, if you don't have a backup, the only way to get that back is to send it to a data recovery company. I have contacted DriveSaver and they can definitely restore SHR Synology hybrid RAID system. That's not a problem, but that's going to be costly. Number one, it's going to take time because you, the drive need to transit over there. They're going to take time to restore. And then once you get the, the data back, most of the time, those data, those files would be generic file names. So you're going to spend time in post reorganizing all those files anyway. It's much cheaper in the long run for you to buy multiple drives just to back up your NAS system. And having a great backup is a great idea. My recommendation is to have two backup systems, one on site for immediate backup and immediate restore, and another one off site in case something happens to the site that you have this analogy and also the first backup. This way you have something off site that you can restore to a new system or something like that. You don't have to worry about that too much. The drive that I like to use to back up these Synology are the Seagate Backup Plus. They're, you know, these black drive or even just a white one for the Macintosh, but they're priced really reasonably. So far, I have been getting the eight terabyte one, which are really awesome. They're about $120 for eight terabyte, which are really considered dirt cheap. Uh, and they're gonna just only come down in pricing. 
So far, I have been dabbling in with the 10 terabyte as well because the price have been dropping, but we're gonna see the capacity increasing and the price continue to drop on these drives as well. But they're really good slower drive that you can use it to back up your NAS and that's perfectly fine. You can have multiple of them and it won't necessarily break the bank because you don't need to buy the performance drive to really back up your NAS or the same type of drive that you put in here, which are more costly compared to those backup drive. All right. So now what we're going to do is a control crash on my Synology system because there's no file system installed on here and I really want to see what happens in multiple of these scenarios. I've been running testing on there and I'd like to share the result with you. I've been doing a lot of search on YouTube and there's not a lot of channels that really shows you what happened when a crash process is going on. The thing too is that when this happens to ourselves, we go through this automatic panic mode because our data is now pretty much in jeopardy, right? So we're no longer thinking straight. So if I can at least demonstrate this now, you can see the process of what happens. This will hopefully get you somewhat used to it and also ease your mind when something like this is going on at the very same time. I'll be doing this demo on SHR1 and SHR2. That means one drive failure tolerance and two drive failure tolerance. I'll also be explaining to you some of the process that I have discovered along the way as well. I mean, this has been a learning journey for me as well, just being able to crash test a Synology system and being able to see what really happens. I'll be powering up and down my system quite a bit because the drive inside here are still fairly new. What I want to do is preserve them the best that I can. So I don't want to be doing a hot swap on them. That means while they're running right now, you can pull the drive out. This way you can replace a drive while the system is still running so that the array never goes offline. This is not being used by anyone right now. There's no data on there. So I'm just gonna power it on it off this way the hard drive doesn't go through a lot of the jolt process when you yank it out from electricity without properly powering it down all right let's get started with the process so let's show you what is on my synology dsm first so let me log in so right now if i go into the main menu i'll show you storage manager we have the system that's healthy that's perfectly great the volume right now is in Synology Hybrid RAID SHR with a one drive fault tolerance you see there and it's right now doing the checking uh, parity consistency. Essentially, I just really built this up to just do this demo and normally I will let this finish but because I'm constantly doing these demos, I'm just gonna just shut this down and force it to crash and we'll go along with it. The storage pool again, this is also HSR you'll see there and all those six drives are in the array. They're working just fine. They're all healthy. Type of allocation is normal and the health is really great. On this one, I'll go into file station and you can see there that I have SHR1 test. There's no file in there right now. I don't plan to write any files and spend any more time on this. What I really want to do is just demo this. So let's shut this down. And the first thing I'm going to do is pull one drive out to simulate a OneDrive failure. And we'll talk about that a little bit more once I pull the drive out and the whole system of shut down. Okay, so the system of shut down, I'll pull drive number six out, which is the last drive in the array. So simply push in, pull it out. So this is a drive that I have, is an eight terabyte Western Digital WD Red Pro. And the thing is this, if I power up the system right now, and this is no longer part of the array, when it starts up, it looks for all the drive. If one of them is not there, it kicks this drive out of the array. So even though if I plug this drive in, whether a system is on or off and I boot it up again, it will recognize this drive as a brand new drive and it won't recognize this drive as being part of the array anymore because the system will boot up without it. But if I just pull this drive out while the system is down like this, plug it into computer, and let's say I need to run a firmware update on this drive, I can certainly do that once I've done that, provided that the data is not affected, meaning that it has not been format, altered in any way at all, I can simply plug this drive back in, like so. And if I power this on, it will recognize it and it should run normally. If you're gonna do a firmware update, what I would do is probably power up and power down, very similar to what I'm doing right now, just do a one drive at a time, just in case for some weird reason, the firmware update didn't go through. It wiped the drive out for some reason. This way you're not just upgrading all these six drives at the same time and running into an issue with it. And talk about firmware for the drive a little bit quickly here. Um, buying all the drive in the same batch doesn't necessarily guarantee that you're going to get the same firmware, but it increased the likelihood of it. And I'm finding out very 
much so through personal experience that running the same drive from the same manufacturer, same capacity, but on from a different lot and different firmware can sometimes cause problems in a network attached storage array. So just something to remember there and keep in mind. All right, so we have this pulled out. We're gonna simulate a one disk failure. I'm going to power this up and we're gonna do a few experiments. So normally one beep would be good. However, if it's consistently beeping like this, that means something is going on. Let's log into our DSM and see what happens. So the first thing that shows up there, DSM automatically launches control panel and it tells us the reason for current beep, volume degraded or crash. It doesn't really know, but it just knows something is going on. So let's turn the beep off. This way it doesn't annoy us anymore. There we go, it's off. Close control panel out and Storage Manager is automatically launched as well, and it's now telling us that it now needs attention. The volume has degraded. If, if you go into the storage pool itself, it will tell you that the storage pool has degraded, one of the drive has failed or missing, and what you need to do is replace it with the drive of the same size or larger. And what you want to do there is a number of drives that needs to be repaired as one. So with the system on, what I can simply do is plug this in right away, but I don't want to do that to this drive. So I'm going to power this entire array down. Let's plug this back in because we know that this just been pulled out, but it was part of that array before and see if it would recognize it or not. All right, the NAS is shut down. Let's plug this drive back in and we're just simply going to power the whole thing up. We're gonna consistently hear this beep for the video, so I'll log in. And again, DSM have launched control panel and also storage manager. I will turn the beep off, close this out, and go back to storage manager. Let's expand this out. So we have one drive that needs attention, you can see there. What we can do though at this point is that in the storage pool, even though we put the same drive that was part of the pool before, that has not been formatted or anything at all. The RAID array no longer recognize that that was part of the system before, again, because you turn that on. Something to note here though with SHR1 is that if you want to upgrade this to a larger drive, this is pretty much the process you would have to go through. The best thing to do is just shut down the array, pull that one drive out. Let's say this is an eight terabyte now. You can plug in, for example, a 14 terabyte drive. And what you would simply do when you launch it again, it will beep like this. You can come into the storage manager and storage pool right there under actions. And you would just have to choose repair. It will ask you which drive you want to use for part of repair. Click on next and then press OK. What this will do is that it will continue to re rebuild the array with that drive. And if that drive have more space, then it will also allow you to expand to a greater space in your storage pool as well. So like I said, this is the great part about SHR is the flexibility. I'm gonna cancel that out. We're not gonna do it. What we're gonna do is shut down one more time and this time on an SHR one that has only one drive fault tolerance, what I'm going to do is pull two drive out and reboot the system and let's see what happens. All right, our system is off. I'm gonna pull drive number six and five out. That's six and this is five. Something to note is that if you ever pull all these drive out of the array in order to clean this out by blowing air in there to remove dust or whatever that may be, you want to put the drive back in in the same order that you have them in before. So taking notes of that would definitely be important. If you're not sure what drive number they are, one, two, three, four, five, six, so on and so forth, the best thing to do is to look at a manual because it will tell you exactly. The only time that I found that to be an issue is that when I was transferring my 12 bay Synology system that was a desktop one that has six bay on one side and six on the other side to a server rack run that has three rows and four columns running. So pretty much it's like three rows of hard drive going, four drives across. Figuring out how the drive number matches from the desktop disk station to the rack one was extremely interesting because the way how they numbered those are slightly different. All right, let's turn this back on and see what happens. We hear two beeps there. And it's going to consistently beep at this point. Let's log in. Again, this time DSM automatically launches control panel, but it doesn't launch storage manager for us. 
So this is really telling us that something is already going on. Let's open this up and open Storage Manager. We can see that it's now showing us danger. Essentially, Storage Pool 1 have now crashed. So the volume that we have Synology SHR1 test there is no longer there. So if I go in for instance, let's go into File Station. We can see that there are no longer any share folder. At this point in time, the best thing you can do is to build the array back up again and restore it from a backup that you have. If you do not have a backup, this is where you would take everything in. And if a data is extremely crucial and important, send it out to a data restoration service to which it's going to, uh, it's going to be cost prohibitive, but if it is important enough, that is a trade-off that we all have to make at one point in time anyway. So with that being said, there's not a lot that can be done here. And because the system and the storage have totally crashed, what I'm gonna do is let's shut this down and I'll put the drive back in the same order that I pulled them out, which is uh, the drive number six is actually the one below and drive number five is actually the one on top here. So I'll put it back in that order and see if we can possibly use something, if anything may come out of that. Remember though, that this is an empty array. If there are data on there, I wouldn't put too much hope into it, but we'll see what happens. So I'll plug number five back in. Six. And let's power it on again. So we're still hearing that beep is not going away. Let's log in. Turn off the beep and control panel. The interesting thing this time is that storage manager launched. That means that we may have the storage volume. And because this is really only using 61 megabyte or so, this may be the reason why we're okay uh, with just only one drive being removed and put back into the array. So let's see what the storage manager is telling us. So on the volume side, it's telling us that it's degraded, no longer crashed like I said before. And so there is a volume, which is a good thing. When we click on storage pool, it also says that the storage pool has degraded with the number of drive that needs to be repair one because that's the maximum number of drive that can be repaired. It recognizes our drive number five there, but the allocation status, it says system partition failed. What this really means is that Synology stores DSM copy or information about the entire system in general in a RAID 1 format across all the drive. So one drive fails, this way the other drive can then take over and still boot into DSM without any issues. This is showing a system partition failed. What this generally means is that you should back up your data and then refresh the entire array, start fresh. Health status is still good. Let's go into HD SSD. You can see there that there are two drive with system partition failed and drive six is no longer part of the group. Again, what you can do here is come in the storage pool and try to repair, but it will only allow you to repair drive number six because with this system in general, what I believe is that it needs a minimum number of drive in order to perform. So for example, in SHR1, it needs whatever the drive array have minus one. So for instance, I have a six drive array. It will take the five drive, even though that fifth drive is no longer related in any way at all. It will still show up in here and said that you still have to pull, but the data is probably already gone at this point. What I'm gonna do now is reset my Synology NAS because I've done all the demonstration I need with SHR1. We'll reset this into SHR2 and try a two disk failure and see what happens. Okay, so I'm back and I have just set up SHR2. Right now the system is doing the checking parity consistency. We're gonna have it run, but we're gonna force crash this whole system anyway, just to learn. Um, and it's really entertaining, right? Crash entertaining. It's really hard to find those two words in one sentence that have this much fun and this great learning experience. All right. So on the volume there, we have SHR, Synology Hybrid RAID with two drive fault tolerance. That really means that two drive can fail and you're still going to be good. Storage pool is showing us the same thing there and all the drive allocation including health is normal and also healthy that means everything is working properly and if i go into the file station i have created shr2 test this is pretty much the folder that we use to test again there's no file in there but this drives the point across when you really can't access that folder anymore okay so let's shut this down and pull two drive out and simulate a two drive failure on an shr2 
With the system fully powered down, I will pull out drive again, number five and number six. So let's pull a six out first. Pull drive number five out. We'll leave it on the table this way. So if you have SHR2 and you need to do a firmware upgrade, what you can do is lift life on the wild side a little bit and upgrade to drive at the very same time. You're still going to be safe, but if you ask me honestly, what I would tell you is to just do one drive at a time. This way you still have that extra on backup should there be any mechanical failures or anything along those lines. Let's power this back on and we're definitely going to be hearing the beep. Let's see what DSM is going to tell us. So we're now getting the beep and recent recurrent beep, volume degrade or the crash. Let's turn the beep off, close control panel. So storage manager is telling us that the volume has degraded. So we can see there is degraded. Storage pool itself, uh, number of drive needs to be repaired is two. But the great thing about this whole system is that because these two drive fail, you still have access to your file. And even though these drive may be repairing, you would still have access to all these files. And that's the great thing about having the SHR2 is that you can have two drive failure and you would still be safe. All right, so let's shut this off. And what we are going to do is insert these two drive back into the array and see if we can repair these two drive at the same time because this is SHR2. This is something that with SHR1 you can't do because it will only allow you to repair that one drive. Even though the other drive that was in there is not part of the array, it won't allow you to do anything along that line at all. Let's turn off the beep. Look at storage manager. It's still showing us that the volume has degraded, but let's see what happens with the volume and the storage pool in general. It says that the number of drive that needs to be repaired that is two. The overview view is interesting because it shows one needs attention, four used drive, and one unused drive. So let's really see what's going on there. Storage pool doesn't really tell us much because it only tells us a drive number one through four is part of the array right now. And if we look in this one, okay. So this is interesting. It tells us that one of them is initialized, drive number six and number five has a system partition failed. So interesting there. Let's see if we can go to storage pool, action, repair. All right, so the nice thing about this is you can repair both drive at once. So in SHR2, you can repair both drives. So if you want to upgrade to a larger volume or a larger drive in general, you can put two larger drive in there. But I would highly discourage you from doing that because if one of the original drives that are in there have a mechanical failure or something along those lines, while it's restoring these two drives, pretty much the volume would crash and you will no longer be able to access the data on the drive. We're not going to go forward with this repair. What we're going to do is shut this down. We'll pull three drive out this time, push it beyond its limitation and see how the system is going to respond. And then what we'll do is plug in all those three drive. And when we plug it back in, we're not going to plug them in the same order. We're going to shuffle them a little bit and see how Synology handles this entire um, charade that we're about to throw at it. Okay, start out by pulling drive number six. Four, or five rather. And then four. So now this is entirely pull out. Let's power this on with three drive now in SHR2. If we really do the math right now, this is pretty much a mathematical impossibility because you need at least four of these drive in there. You need at least 32 terabyte running in order to have some, safe, some resemblance of safe backup. So right now we're really down to 24, which is less than the original allocation of 32 terabyte. This is pretty much a mathematical impossibility that we're looking at. Turn off the beep. Very similar to what we've seen before, once the volume has crashed, literally control panel will just launch, but storage manager no longer comes up. So we have to go into the main menu, 
open storage manager and now this is pretty much telling us that the volume is crashed use drive is three available slot is three because we pulled these three drive out the volume is gone you can go into file station and it says there's no longer any volume in there it will tell you to create one but it really can't storage pool itself showed you that it pretty much crashed unable to use the storage pool so there we have it let's shut this down and let's shuffle the drive plugging back in i think what we're going to see is very similar to shr1 where it will recognize the drive as part of the array but if you really have data on there that data is already gone and by the way at this point in time pretty much again unless you have a backup externally to this analogy there's not a lot that you can do all right so this is drive number four we're going to plug it into six like i said we're going to switch this around drive number five that would normally be in here we're going to put it in number four so let's see what happens and this is drive number six we'll put in bay number five Again, things that you're not supposed to do, but we're just having fun and learning. Turn it back on. This is going to be the last experiment to show you what would happen in DSM and how that would see the whole thing. And then we'll wrap this up. Let's silence the beep. Close control panel. Storage manager pops up, but not for good reason. Because we have the minimal number of drive met, it's showing us that the volume has degraded. So we go into the volume, doesn't say much, it says that it has been degraded. And if we go into the storage pool itself, we now have drive six as number four. So it recognizes that it was part of the drive six system that was there before and it says system partition failure. I'm not 100% certain if you have data on here, will this be able to get restored or not but let's say if you have these amount of this fail and you have to put three of the new one in that hasn't been part of this analogy system before chances are it will probably not recognize the drive six like the way how it is doing right now and what you're seeing so this is probably one of those situations where we're just really testing this and really rapidly testing it without formatting the drive in between which is the reason why we're seeing certain things working but it's not really indicative of that by any means so as you can see there, our so system partition failed on all those three drives that we pulled out. So that is fantastic. That's exactly what we want. And if we go into file station, we can still see the SHR2 test. And again, this is because we just literally pull a drive and plug it back in. If this was a fresh new drive we were putting in for all three of them, I don't think this is going to be the situation that we would be looking at all because one of those drives contain a set of data is redundant that is needed for this array. So I hope that you find this crash test helpful, educational, and a really great learning experience because if you're like me, most of the time when you get a new array like this, you get all the drives you want, you would just initialize them and start throwing data on there right away. At least that's what I do. One of my system has over 40 terabytes of data on there and I'm definitely not gonna be cavalier and playing with testing the system this way on a 40, uh, terabyte system the other system I have 30 terabyte on there again I'm not going to be testing it in this way because it's too much of a risk for me to lose all those data but because I'm transferring the system over creating a new bigger pool with a larger hard drive that will go in there this is like the perfect situation to run this test if you have any questions about anything that I've done here leave them in the comment section below give this video a like subscribe if you're new and on the bell to be notified every time I upload cool new contents like this and until next time in art we trust.